Hey everyone and welcome to group break number 119. Tonight we have a nice little mixer here, a nice hobby mixer. We got some 2019-20 uh, series one with some 2020-21, 2020-21. Twenty, I said that twice, but series one and series two. 1920 uh, uh, Ice, 1920 Premier, and then 2020-2021 Black Diamond. So uh, good overall mix, gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, obviously you have your steady potential with your young guns and then you have your uh, you know, higher end products with some chance for some big hits. I mean, ice is, you can get some really big cards out of ice, like never sleep on ice. It's one of those weird products, right, in mixers. Um, and then obviously Black Diamond and Premier, you're looking for, you know, your diamond cards out of Black Diamond and then your rookie patch autos as well. So uh, here we go, let's get right into the randoms. And for tonight's break, just in case something seems a little bit off, you see more reflections or whatnot, it's because I am standing up and trying to do the break standing up, uh, just a little bit easier to, kind of maneuver around so um here we go it just involves a little bit of setup change so let's go uh let's get some uh team randoms under right here so three times on the names three times on the teams and who you line up with is who you get and again at any point if you ever want your name your display name to be different from um what your like name is uh be sure to leave it in like the break notes or email us after you purchase your spot. We'll do our best to make sure that we can, you know, accommodate that. So uh, three times on the names. Here we go. Once, twice, and third time. And again, if at any point I'm ever mispronouncing your name or something like that, just give me a shout. Uh, I will do my best to uh, get it correct. So. And three times on the teams. Good luck, everyone. Once, twice, and third time. Rangers on the bottom. So who ended up with them? There's actually a decent mix of good teams between these two years. So, all right. Um, here you go. Mark, you've got the Vegas Golden Knights. Edward, you've got the Minnesota Wild. Robert, you've got the Vancouver Canucks. Jonathan with the Washington Capitals, uh, Evie with the Florida Panthers, Owen with the New Jersey Devils, Adam with the Montreal Canadiens, uh, Jurgen Deep with the Arizona Coyotes, the Pat Crackers, you've got the Bruins, uh, Robert, you've got the Leafs, uh, Brent, you've got the Columbus Blue Jackets, Ryan, you've got the Avalanche, Ethan, you've got the Red Wings, Bill with the Flames, Steve with the Kings, Jean-Francois with the Winnipeg Jets, Jurgen Deep, you've got the Oilers, uh, Daniel with the Carolina Hurricanes, Martin with the San Jose Sharks, Andy with the Philadelphia Flyers, Connor with the Sabres, Mark, you've got the Lightning, Edward with Chicago, Brennan with Ottawa, Steve with the Dallas Stars, Brody, you've got the Islanders, Blake with St. Louis, uh, Jorgen Deep, you've got the Penguins, you got some heavy hitting teams there, uh, Matt with the Predators, Murray with the Ducks, and Robert. You got the Rangers. Yeah, you got all the uh, go big or go home teams, essentially. I mean, even even Arizona is technically a go big or go home, if you count uh, Barrett Hayden as go big. So, <laughs> not many people will, but, like, he's got potential. Like, you've got some nice cards of him, but, yeah, long-term value is not, not great on him. Let's paste it in here. Yeah, I mean, hopefully everyone's having a good Thursday night. I almost said Friday. It feels like a Friday. I don't know why. This entire week's been kind of weird. So, the past couple weeks. Oh. There we go. All right, so we'll leave this team viewer up for a couple minutes here. I am going to uh, make sure I've got everything ready. I do need to have because it's a uh, it is series one. I think we'll end on we'll do something like that. Yeah, something like that for the hobbies. I think we'll just go across the board: series one, series one, series two. Um, It's, it's an interesting mix, so. Uh, Wild, Wild are an interesting team, actually, because you've got, you've got Kaprizov. That is, yeah. Uh, 
That's it's really weird because it's like in 1920 you didn't really want Minnesota at all because it's Minnesota, but um, they've got like I think Nico Sturms in series one, so like semi like might get picked up by Seattle maybe I don't know, but like not the worst player. Um, obviously not like a big name, uh, and then you've got Kakinen as the you know, the goalie who looked to be solid but kind of fell off a little bit over the past few weeks. So, um, so yeah, they're definitely, like, above, above, uh, probably I'd say above average because, I mean, you've got Kaprizov, so that's the real big payoff, um, especially with Series 2 and Black Diamond. But, yeah. All right, and not really seeing much traction on the trade front, so I think we're just gonna go ahead and get uh, get started. Let me get my base variation checklist up uh, for series one, just cause it is annoying. So here we go. Uh, yeah, we'll start off with uh, 1920 and then go from there. Tampa for the wild. Uh, that's a that's a that's a bold one. Oh, all right. We'll give it a uh, time. Is it? Uh, it's five sixteen on my end, so we'll give it like another thirty seconds. So sit with the wild still. Okay. I'll get this box opened up and then we'll, um, by the time this is done, then we should be good. All right, we're empty. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I am doing this standing up. It's so trying to, uh, do something better, but, um, I don't think there's uh, any trades. Uh, series one is Hughes, Hughes, uh, Kubalik, Olafson. Or no, is Olafson series one? I think Olafson series one. Um, Adam Fox. Um, some uh, Makar Canvas would be the other big one. So, all right. Uh, really, yeah, I think we'll, uh, I don't think there's going to be any trades. So trade deadline is passed. All right, here we go. On to series one. Yeah, we haven't pulled a Hughes in a while, so it'd be nice to get one of those two, or one of the two Hugheses. All right, here we go. Good luck, everybody. This is weird opening up packs while standing up. I will say that much. I'll get my garbage can higher up. Things I never thought I would uh, have to do is raise my garbage can. We're starting off with a jersey card, by the way. Uh, Martin Jones for the San Jose Sharks on the game jersey. And, oh yeah, all the bases stuck together. Uh, yeah, so I'll take a little bit to look through the variations just because there are... The 1920 base variations are a lot harder to pick out than uh, 2021 uh, just because they're like you can't really tell without knowing the photos on the cards and it's been long enough um since i've broken it Pedersen generation next for the uh canucks there it's been a long enough time since i've last opened it that i don't know them off by heart anymore but yeah. uh -huh. huberto for the panthers on the canvas Yeah, playoffs are underway. Uh, the Lightning Panthers series is so far the best series. Uh, Fabro for the Predators on the Young Guns. That's a solid one. Like, not the biggest name, but solid. I think he's... Is he in the... If I remember correctly, there's the uh, defenseman crop with, like, Hainala, him. Um, I don't know if Fox is in it, but I know there's, like, one crop that's pretty much all defensemen. Uh, portraits of... Mark Stone for Vegas. But yeah, uh, hopefully we can get something nice. And again, uh, with Series 1 and Series 2 last year, you're always looking for Mark Stone for Vegas on the pure energy. 
Uh, you're always looking for the young gun canvases. So yeah, yeah, that uh, we were talking about that just before the break, sir. That was super scary. Like such an innocent play too. Uh, McDavid for the Oilers on the UD30. I gotta watch out for that one. Uh, ooh, speaking, it's a UD30 pack. Those can sometimes have the base variation snuck in. Uh, is Logan Couture one? 161, he is not. Okay. But yeah, that was just such a, in it, like, innocent-ish play, right? Like, the knee wasn't really bad from, I think it was Shiria, and then just Perry skating by, like, just total fluke. Just so scary to see. Bun him in for the Flyers on the Young Guns. Also, hope you've been doing well, Ryan. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you got my follow-up email there. Uh, sorry it took a while. It's a rough week that one week. So a couple weeks were rough, but back to kind of a normal pace of things. So McDonough for the Lightning. Wonder if he'll be exposed uh, in the Kraken expansion draft. Definitely looking forward to that. Uh, Silverberg for the Ducks on the Pure Energy. Uh, and then I don't think this is a variation. No, it's not. He is in his white jersey for the variation. Oh, base stuck together. I do not miss that. Marchand for the Bruins. And should be a young gun on this side, but... Yeah. Yeah, you hope... I mean, realistically, he's probably gone for a few games. Josh Brown for the Panthers on the young guns. Realistically, like... That, that was definitely... Like, he more than likely has a concussion. Uh... It's more likely that he has a concussion than doesn't have one. Well, speaking of Tavares, sh uh, shooting stars red of Tavares for the Leafs. Because uh, that was... Uh, oof, yeah. It's just... It sucks it was on such like an innocent play, too. I mean, it's better that it's on an innocent play and not like targeted, but... Uh, Gretzky for the Rangers on the UD30. I think that's... Yeah, that's UD30. But yeah, like realistically, I mean, you hope there's no neck injury. You hope that his head's like fine. Um, high skin him for the stars on the canvas. Uh, but yeah, you just, it's just, it's scary. Any like hits to the head are always scary. So uh, you're attacking for the sharks on the young guns. Uh, let me know if you want to do the series by like one at a time, or do you want to do a? Uh, you just want to do like knock out nineteen twenty, then twenty twenty one, then twenty, then twenty twenty one series one, then series two. Uh, Matthews for the Leafs on the portraits. Yeah, the the reg doll is. Uh, oh. That was that was a real real scary part. Uh, ooh, we got a clear-cut Matthews for the Leafs on the Pure Energy. And for the Hurricanes, clear-cut foundations of Aho and Svetch. I mean, that's a pretty good foundation, so. All right, so roll with 1920. And these cards never really sell super well, but they are, like, beyond case hit, so they're pretty rare pulls, but. All right, I will do that. I will knock them out in order. And... Sometimes it's nice to, you know, give the nice hits a little bit of love, like the rarer hits. And apologies if you can hear my cat in the background as well. Then Black Diamond, Ice Black Diamond, Premier to end? Okay, so... I might... Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Verana for the Capitals on the Generation next. I can't believe the Jets won that game last night against the Oilers. They just... It looked like the Oilers just dominated play. 
There we go. Alright. And they just didn't win. Uh, Philip Myers for the Philadelphia Flyers on the Young Guns. Hishier for the New Jersey Devils on the canvas. Nice little Nico canvas. And I definitely like last year's like 1920s Young Gun design better. All the base cards being stuck together is slightly annoying. O'Reilly for the Blues on the Pure Energy. Kale McCarr on the rookie portraits for the Avs. That's actually probably in the... We'll put that in the young gun pile because it's probably above average. I mean, if he sells anything close to what, like, laugh stuff sells for like that, then yeah. But we'll see. All right. And a young gun to end it. Uh, Clifton for the Bruins. Uh... And that ends box one. Not the strongest box. Pretty mediocre young guns, if we're being honest here. Um, yeah, not the strongest, but, I mean, you got the clear-cut foundation, so that is a rarer card. But, yeah, a little bit weaker. Like, honestly, probably the weakest crop that you could get for young guns. <laughs> but here we go. Box two will be better, right? And with that, I can actually knock this down. We'll do this, this, this. I might do ice first, then black diamond, black diamond. But yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll definitely, yeah, we'll mix it up. We'll mix it. There we go. Got your old hockey day in the USA. Empty. All right, here we go. Box two, let's see if we can, we should be able to bo pop box one here. So, uh, jersey card to start off. Uh, Lucic for the Oilers. Not the team you're expecting that for, but it felt like he's been on the flames for longer than what he has. It really does feel like he's been on it for longer. Ooh. Uh, oh, this is a UD30 of Gretzky for the Kings. Uh, is this a... No, it's not a variation. Okay. I thought I saw a different mark zone, but I think it's just a different base card. I was... Oh, right. I was packing a 2020-21 uh, series. I forget what one it was, and I saw his base card. That's probably why I'm confused. Oh, here's a good sign. Uh, Timishoff, Young Gun Canvas for the least. Again, um, generally speaking, when you had a Young Gun Canvas in Series 1 or Series 2 last year, you had a very good box. It's just normally what it seemed like. So, And, well, next card. Nice little Quinn Hughes Young Gun for the Canucks. That's a good sign. Nice one there for the Canucks. Who had him? Robert? There you go. Based on the rest. One thing that I definitely liked about like about uh, this year's Series 1 and 2, though, and this card is a perfect example, is the base design, because it's really off-centered on a lot of these. Ajo for the Hurricanes on the portraits. Next up, we've got a pure energy of Barkov for the Panthers. Nice little Quinn Hughes to start, though. Top left corner, uh, it just looks like it has like a little fluff on it, but nothing like major. 
Uh, Timo Meyer for the Sharks on the Generation Next. Uh, Lesperance for the Stars on the Young Guns. The other thing that bugged me about uh, Series 1 last year is that the Generation Next and then the other horizontal cards are like the opposite direction. So when you're sorting, it's like, so for example, like the base cards are like this, but the generation next are this way, and it's just the wrong, it's just the wrong way. My brain's like, no, can't handle that. Uh, Connor for the Jets. It's so weird how something like so minor, you just like remember, and it's like, yeah, that really bugs me. <laughs> uh, Barzell for the Islanders on the Pure Energy. Yeah. Uh, already a good box. I mean, you got arguably the top young gun from the product, so happy with that. Uh, rookie Portrait says the Dina for the Red Wings. My cat is trying to bury her food dish using air, and it always works very well. Uh, Gavrikov for the Blue Jackets on the young guns. Now she's meowing at me. Uh, 165 is... Nope, he's in his white jersey for his variation. Uh, Taze for the Blackhawks on the Shooting Stars. Normally there's not another card when it's a base variation, but sometimes it can be a little bit off. I think we got an exclusives coming up here. Nope, it's a UD30, sorry. Uh, Patrick Waugh for the Habs. Sure didn't miss anything else. Uh, nope. I don't think any of these are variations either, so. It's just the red on the back kind of confused me. With the Patrick Law. Canvas of Weber for the Habs. Uh, Hainola for the Jets. Honestly, solid. Uh, Larkin is not a variation. His variation is in the white jersey. I think we pulled the Larkin base variation before. Uh, Gaudreau for the Flames on the portraits. And they'll normally be in the middle, too. So, Just if you're ever opening up 1920 still, like hobby, they're only in hobby, so don't worry about it in retail. Line A for the Jets on the uh, Pure Energy. But yeah, uh, if you ever open it up and want to know if you've got a base variation, it's, I mean, it the easiest way is just to look them up. Uh, Colin White for the Sinners. Ooh, an autograph here uh, of Louis Domingue for the Tampa Bay Lightning. So case hit there. Not the biggest name at all, but former Canuck. I mean, he was full former Canuck. He went to the uh, Flames, so. Yeah, if you're ever wondering, like, you're just wondering to tell the difference between uh, whether or not, in, especially in 1920, it's a base variation or the regular one, uh, look up the picture of the exclusives or high gloss or clear cut, and that one will be the same across the base. Uh, keeper for the Panthers on the Young Guns. So that was the easiest way to kind of find out the list. And I mean, there's a couple good lists already out there. So just if you're ever confused or if you have, you know, base kicking around. So Keller for the Yotes on the canvas. Uh, Pashtrak for the Bruins. Ah, I miss Stetcher. I really would. He is the like one of the big players. I wish the Canucks actually kept. Um, Sagan for the Stars. Well liked in the room. Good player. Better than what his like pro what most people probably think, and he kind of showed that this year. And Gignac for the uh, Devils on the Young Guns. So uh, between the two boxes, that was okay. We hit a our averages for Young Gun canvases. We hit. Um, 
I mean, a Hughes, we hit a couple case hits. So, not the biggest case hits by any stretch, but at the same time, they're still case hits, so. Yeah, but imagine Rathbone and Stetcher. <laughs> like, Stetcher on the right side? Pretty, pretty, pretty good idea. But that's just me. Especially when, you know, I mean, their right side's gonna be rough. Especially if Nate Schmidt's gone. I mean, it sounds like he'll probably be gone. Um, which, I mean, long-term for the Canucks, if they can get what they paid for him, or even better, like more than what they paid for him, great. Um, uh, uh, uh. So I just gotta do a chat ban here. I, you can. Um, I mean, you can definitely do it. Um, I mean, Quinn Hughes is what, 5'11"? Like, you're talking a few inches here and there. Um, but, like, if you can, the biggest part is just, like, being able to play and skate. Like, if you can do that, you're fine. Uh, I, I think Schmidt might have asked for a trade through what I've read or and seen. So, uh, Broberg. Oh, that's a French variation of Broberg for the Oilers. So, right out of the gate, uh, pulling a little bit of heat from 2020-2021 Series 1. Uh, again, same thing, though. Like, if you're killing penalties, I mean, the main thing that, like, more height does is that it gives you a longer reach on your stick. But at the same time, I would take... A 5'11 defender over Tyler Myers. Um, just because, like, I would take Setcher over Tyler Myers on the PK pretty much every day of the week. Um, but, yeah. Uh, it's definitely, like, definitely merits and stuff, but uh, Blackwood for the Devils, by the way, on the rookie retrospective. Um, yeah. I mean, if, hey, if your players are short enough, they can't screen your goalie as well either. Okay. I, I I, mean, I imagine Edler's coming back. Um, I don't really see him signing anywhere else. So, Nick Dowd doing well in the playoffs. Uh, Kurosh out for Chicago on the Young Guns. I forgot these are all stuck together. Like, I, I think he can get away with shorter defense in. And again, like, you're talking, for the most part, like, if they're 6'3", versus, like, what, uh, O'Reilly for the Blues? Like, you're looking at 6'3", versus, uh, like, 5'11", 5'10", like, it's 4 inches, and like, yeah, that, that's enough, but at the same time, it's, I don't know, the biggest thing is that you just gotta be good at playing hockey. Doc for Chicago on the debut dates. And like, I'll take someone who's good at playing hockey who can box people out uh, with their positioning and stick work over anything else, so. Yeah, and like some of the best defensive defensemen have been shorter, so. Bristol line for the Sabres on the canvas. So it all comes down, like, there's definitely merits to being, like, like if you could be tall and really good, great. Uh, Evander came for the Sharks on the jersey, just dinged up corner on that one. These jerseys are pretty bad for that. But I definitely don't think you, like, especially in today's NHL, you don't need to have, like, big, strong defenders as you used to need in previous years. So Kubelik for Chicago on the debut dates. Got another Young Guns coming up here. Uh, Joseph Wolf for the Leafs. Yeah, Sharks have uh, kind of hit the lottery on the jerseys. 
they're one of the teams in this mix that's uh, just good value. I don't think we'll see a laugh in this box, but could be wrong. Uh, Flurry for Vegas. I forget what crop he's actually with. This is uh, the Worldwides, right? Yep, NHL Worldwide of Teravinen for the Hurricanes. I almost said for Finland, but that doesn't really uh, work too well. Uh, Young Gun Canvas of Mikey Anderson for the Kings. Not horrible. Not horrible. Yeah, I mean, the Broberg French Young Gun is solid. The Mikey Anderson, like, so two extra Young Guns in this box. Let's see if we can get, like, a clear cut as well. Coughlin for Vegas. There we go. Uh, Lance Gog for the abs on the canvas. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I think the biggest prerequisite for a defenseman is just being good. If you can be good, like, I really don't care how tall you are at, at a certain point. Connor, predominant for the Jets. That's like, that's like one of those weird things. Like, I think over time we're going to start to see a bit of a shift to more like players that are better at sick checking and like stuff like that. Marchand for the Bruins on the Dazzlers uh, and body positioning because there are short players that are really good at that and they're very hard to knock off the puck or they're very hard to kind of like uplift and stuff like that. Um, and I think we're going to see a bit of a transition to that over time. Couture for the Sharks on the portraits. Which I think is overall better for the game. Um, you know, having having more skilled defenders is probably better than just pure strength. Uh, Ingram for the Predators on the young guns. From a from a game standpoint, like don't get me wrong, you'll still need some pure strength guys like. Logan Stanley as an example of a player who I like I'm shocked he's doing as well as what he's doing in the NHL but he's showing he's like at least an NHL level player. Uh Shesterkin for the Rangers on the rookie retrospective. Uh, but like he isn't like like he's good as a 5-6 but like he he's needs He's not a good enough like puck mover or skater to be. Oh, oh, for the Oilers, day with the cup flashback of Yari Curry. These are super tough to hit. Nice one there for the Oilers. There you go. Heavy hidden team hits. Twice. Actually, really good box for the Oilers. That's a, that's a rare card. Dollar value-wise, again, probably not the highest, but rare card, cool card, cool to highlight. It, it's a uh, Curry, not Wayne, unfortunately. But, yeah. Well, Nick Robertson for the least on the Young Guns. I don't know if he's actually, like, insta-sleeve and top-load anymore. Eh, we'll do it anyways. I'll sleeve him and top-load him after. The Wayne one's the... A different one. I, I have the Wayne one near me, but yeah. It's still a really nice card. So I, I like the flashbacks, except for the 2011 ones. Those ones are, aren't good. Uh, Crosby for the Penguins. They should never do Day with the Cup flashbacks to 2011. Unless it's my friend who got to be out on the ice for that, so... All right, there we go. Uh, a little chagrin for the Leafs on the rookie portraits. A little bit miscut there. But that's a really solid box, I would say, of Series 1. Uh, like, no Jason Robertsons, but you got his brother at least. Um, 
Day with the Cup flashback is nice. Foodie for the Blue Jackets. Uh, bonus, two bonus Young Guns with the Canvas and French variation. Am I kidding? A decent name on the French variation. But yeah. yeah, I think I think over time we're gonna see a bit more of a shift in how hockey's played too, as we start seeing the, you know, the McCars and Hughes start to thrive. Um, the whole concept of positionless hockey, I think, might start to take off a little bit. Because, like, hey, if you can have a defenseman or someone who can uh, jump up into the rush, like, that's great. Especially if they have the skating ability to do that and get back in the play and, like, know their position. And so you might, you might like, slowly start seeing hockey. Like, it'll be, it'll probably be a slow progression, but you'll probably see it evolve over the next, like, 25 years or so to become more of like five man units as opposed to just like straight up positions especially as like um new code coaching strategies evolve right so um yeah i i think it's something that you might see some teams start experimenting with especially like four forwards that even strength down by one um you might start seeing some teams start to experiment with that more and more um like when it's 5v5 not pulling the goalie, they go to four forwards right away. And the early data behind it is pretty promising. So. All right, here we go. Uh, Lindstrom for the Red Wings on the Young Guns. But yeah. Just given where like some of the best teams and best defenders in the league have been, I think, and like watching some of the young, younger defensemen uh, kind of grow up. Uh, this is a base pack, it looks like. Nope, never mind. French variation. Duh, there's those. Uh, Patrick Cornquist for the Penguins. Uh, I mean, the Vancouver Giants have a kid named Madison Leslie who is like very, very good transitionally. Like, um, getting the puck into the. Offensive zone, shooting, stuff like that. Boquist for the Blackhawks on the debut dates. Like, you don't really see 15-year-old defensemen, uh, like, underagers come into the WHL and have as good of a shot as he does. And it's just, like, just the amount of skill. Like, obviously, special player, but you just don't see that stuff. Hughes for the Canucks as we knock the debut dates. <laughs> John Blum. Oh, man. That's a throwback. But yeah, um, it was uh, like, I think you'll start to see that transition over time. Mark Stone on the predominant for Vegas, especially as like players like Makar, players like Hughes start to get, you know, their fair share. I mean, even McAvoy in Boston is super underrated. Um, Adam Fox, again, like you got all these really talented offensive defensemen and you're going to see that transition over time. Uh, Burkowski for Colorado because all of them like I mean well Hughes had a rough year defensively this year but like Adam Fox has been great defensively McCarr has been I mean he just has a puck so often Colorado so strong that uh, ooh nice one Robertson for the Stars that's actually one of the better ones that you can pull from this nice little J-Rob former Niagara Ice Dog got the brothers but yeah i think you'll see that transition over time and as there's a thread on twitter that i saw today about people you know whether or not today's players could survive in you know 90s hockey with all the hooking and stuff and just thinking about that and how much the games have evolved like i think it'll be probably you know 10 years or so till we start to see some of it could check on the dazzlers for the centers it'll probably be 10 15 years before you see more and more of the defensemen, like, you know, the Rathbones, the Hughes, the McCars, like, like, Rathbones is a good example of a player, like, as long as he can hold his own defensively, could check for the Flames on the portraits, um, and, like, early indications aren't horrible there, um, if they can hold their own, then they're gonna be probably preferred, right, you'd rather have someone that can move the puck and join the rush than not, so, Ustamenko for the Flyers on the Young Guns, but yeah, uh, speaking of John Blum, back in the uh, good old Vancouver Giants days, him and Cody Franson uh, were like an electric deep pair. 
Uh, really fun to watch them. Uh, Nico for the Devils, again, on the canvas. You got both years. Um, like, just electric. But before the game, they do a passing, like, thing back to each other and kind of, like, bring it, like, start off, like, kind of one side of the face-off circle to the other and go back and forth all the way. Um, really, really cool. Like, just cool and fun to watch. Merz Lickens for the Blue Jackets. Uh, but they had a play... I forget where it was. I think it was overtime. And it was a four on four on three or four on four overtime. Nice. Who scored for the uh, Leafs? Jamie Benn for the Stars on the jersey. But the center wins the draw for it. I forget who is the center. I can't. I wish I could find a video of this play. Because it's like. It's one play that's just been ingrained in my memory forever. Uh, they win the the center wins the draw forward and I think it was Blum and Franson both just jump past the defenseman and had uh they had a just a clear cut uh, worldwide of Backstrom for the Capitals clear cut uh, two on zero and just scored instantly I think it was overtime it might have not been overtime but it was just one of the most like like coolest set plays off a of faceoff that I've ever seen there's Nylander. Uh Patrick came for Chicago. I wish I could find it, because it's just... It, I still haven't really seen anything like that. That and uh, Brendan Shinneman shooting off a face-off and going, like, top shelf was unreal. Uh, Bishop for the Stars on the predominant. That one was, like, right in front of me. I I believe that's when Wacy was there, yeah. Probably around the same time frame. Uh, Young Gun Canvas of Little Green for the Leafs. And Mahatrick. M Probably, yeah, because that was Memorial Cup time. So, it was around those years. Yeah. Wacy was heck of a hockey player. Same with Mahachek. Mahachek carved himself out a pretty good pro career. Uh, nice young gun here, Peyton Krebs for the Golden Knights. He is on probably a player that you want to keep for now. Really, really good. And again, Vegas is probably going to need cheap players for a while. So Barkov on the Pink Dazzlers for the Panthers. But yeah, that those Giants teams were unreal. Lots of fun. I mean, Garrett Hunt was one of my favorite players growing up. Um, super scrappy. Lucas Carlson for Chicago, uh, along with the Sonnes. Uh, the Sonnes actually went to... Um, school with Brett and I mean Brett Son is probably the most famous one but Brennan and um, oh man I remember Wick Turrell and Kyle Lamb uh, Kyle Lamb is uh, I think it's one of my dad's friends from works like somehow I think like nephew something like that but but yeah, uh, the Sonnies one day, like I was wearing my giant jersey and like one of them was back and yelled, uh, go tips because he was playing as Brennan and he was going for like, uh, I think it was playoffs or something. I forget the whole scenario, but um, yeah, it was just kind of cool. They're, him and Brennan and Garrett Hunt would always kind of have the stage fights at the start of every game. Obviously, looking back on it, really not the smartest thing, but hey, uh, next up. Uh, young gun of Velarde for the Kings. And that was a patch ready for Vegas on the portraits, by the way. So, Oh, wow. That's uh, kind of a small world. Yeah, those Giants teams were a lot of fun to watch. Matthews for Lease on the canvas. They were... Uh, very influential. Fistrick, another player. Vividly remember. Uh, Ovechkin, predominant for the Capitals. That Memorial Cup year was... Uh, who was there? Uh, I think Perron was there. Was Marchand in that as well? I, he might have been. I don't fully remember, but he might have been. Uh, who's the big goalie? Was it, uh, was it Bernier was the big goalie in that one? 
I'm like, oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Garrett Hunt, um, when he broke his leg, like, I remember that. I, that's another play that's just, like, ingrained in my head is when he broke his leg, just, like, him, like, yelping and, like, crashing into the boards. But um, when he was, like, rehabbing, he was re rehabbing in a place in Pitt Meadows that I was also going to for, like, training and stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, my gosh. The Kendall McArdle stuff, man. That that medicine hat game, oof. I that series I will never ever 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 forget. That was um, that was rough, especially like the way it ended in all the fog too. But yeah, and then I think it's Benjafield was a kind of like enforcer who would kind of, kind of come in to fight versus uh. Versus, uh, whatchamacallit, like, whenever Dorset did something, it was Ben, I think it was Benjafield, who would always come in, so. Uh, Joseph for the Penguins, on the marquee rookie. But, yeah. Yeah, that was not a fun series. I think, uh, uh, Couturier for the Flyers, and Besser for the Canucks on the Dazzlers. Uh. Uh, who was it? What was it like? Um, was it Dorset that bit the finger of McArdle in that series? Larmy for the Penguins. I know there was one player that bit McArdle's finger, and that was like, oh, that was watching that on back in the day Shaw Cable. Uh, Frank Hoos for Colorado. That was very, uh, very upsetting. I am very glad the Giants won the Memorial Cup, though. Angelo for the Penguins. Yeah. I I could never really forgive or, like, really cheer for Dorset ever. Like, ever. No matter how, like, how good his story was or... And like even when he was a cuck, she's like, no, I just can't forgive you for that series. Uh, Joseph for the Penguins. Penguins are cleaning up here. But yeah, then his career ending was uh, yeah, his 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 career ending like that sucked. That's when you're just like, okay, I really actually feel bad for him. So, sweeter for Chicago. Uh, was he a signing or was he a trade? I think he was a trade. And then signing. But, like, the problem with that is that you shouldn't be looking to get the current Derek Dorsett. You should be looking to get the next Derek Dorsett. A smart person told me that. Sam Reinhart for the Sabres on the canvas. But, yeah, it wasn't, like, a horrible, horrible deal compared to everything else. So, Leonard for San Jose on the Young Guns. Those were those were some series though. Uh Coughlin on the red rookie for uh Vegas. Put that up there. That was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of good memories. I would add a play I would wear playoff towels under my hat. I was like I don't know, I think like twelve around then. Uh Bobby Ryan for the Senators on the blue. Actually probably younger, probably like 10 11 is 06 so i would have been uh 07 would have been yeah it would have been about 11 12 uh the blues nothing major honestly i don't even know if anything uh, you, you've got definitely like some sort of parallels or something byron for the abs on the portraits you might have like o'reilly stuff i think like an o'reilly portrait or something like that but yeah yeah, those, uh, those years for uh, Robertson for the Leafs and French Federation and Chushkin for the Abs. Those years of Giants hockey were so good. Sorry, there's a mosquito in here. I think. Uh... Okay, he's gone. My arm just started itching really badly, so 
It's like, maybe there's a mosquito here. Uh, shaman for the sharks on the young guns. And it felt like I got bit. And I did, I think. So. Oh, Boma, JD Watt. Yeah, Craig Cunningham. Love Craig Cunningham. We got a, like a clear cut card coming. Nope, we don't. Would have rather had a clear cut card than that, but. Yeah, Lance Boma was, again, another really, like, player who carved out, again, a half decent career. Uh, Festerling was another uh, player that was. I mean, from that time frame. Uh, Cole Smith for the Predators on the Young Guns. Who else? There, that was just a lot of... There are a lot of, like, good players. Uh, Gage Quinney for Vegas. You got part of the uh, armband there on the jersey. So definitely a rarer piece of the jersey. And yet the most... Like, the best... The best Vancouver Giant player of all time, like in terms of like what they've turned into, is Brennan Gallagher, and it's really not close. Um, Regula for Chicago. Brennan Gallagher is extremely underrated. Like he is a legit top ten winger in the league. He just can't finish scoring chances too often to save his life. If he did, he would be legitimately like one of the best. Bobby Ryan for the Senators. But, but yeah, there were some good teams. Even like Tyson Sacksmith carved out a pretty good pro career for himself. Uh, Drew Doughty for the Kings. Uh, Brendan Mickelson, Megan's brother. Yeah, Fistrick, I think I already mentioned him. Krebs for Vegas on the marquee rookie. But yeah, that was those were some fun teams. Gallagher, oh Gallagher, in, especially when you factor in his play driving, he is crazy. Uh, Kratzoff for the Rangers, like I think he has the most, like year in and year out, like over the past few years, he's had the most individual scoring chances out of any player in the league, I think. Uh, cousins for the Sabres on the Young Guns. Like, legitimately speaking, like Gallagher is one of the best play-driving wingers in the entire league. Like, he is... He is crazy good. He just doesn't... He doesn't have the finishing ability. Uh, Vanacek for the Capitals on the Portraits. Like, if... If Gallagher ever had, like, if he had Hoaglander's puck skills, especially, like, finishing, like, probably finishing ability, Gallagher would be, like, legit 40 goals a year. He gets so many scoring chances. So. But, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean things like goals and points do matter, but at the, like, when he's on the ice, relatively speaking, like he still gets a lot of goals, and he still gets a, like a like a decent amount of goals and a decent amount of assists, while the opposition doesn't really score much against him. And I think like I think you got to do you you can use all stats available to you, right? Um, and like the fact that he's able to drive play that well, like. If you give him a good finisher on his lines, there's a reasonable argument to be made that you can probably see his scoring go up a lot. So. But yeah, like obviously like goals, points, at the end of the day, that is what matters, but it's how you get to those. And like the things he does well is leads to those. So wool for the Leafs. So, I I think um, like again, you look at his ability to not allow goals against, which is is harder to measure than what I think a lot of like everyone. Nice left rookie portraits for the Rangers and Sebastian Ajo, French variation for the Hurricanes. Uh, like you know you 
you look at what he does and what he brings to the team and like could he be better probably milos for the sharks um like are there better wingers than him for sure but like his value is a lot better than just his points uh zucker for the penguins because like he draws a lot of penalties too i mean he just he causes a lot of havoc out there so It's just, he's so good. Burke for the Yotes. Yeah, greatest giant of all time, without a question, is him. In terms of, like, long-term abilities. Uh, rookie tandems, or rookie materials duels of Baudin and Kershev for Chicago. Like, he does the little things really well. I, I don't think it's that deep of a of a reach. Like if you probably look at points over the past few years, he's I think he's up there, especially goals. Marchment for the Panthers. I actually don't think it's as big of a reach as uh as what you think, especially in terms of like production too. Like he does produce a decent amount. Nijov Nijo for the Sharks. Like, his production over the past three years, five years, is up there really, really, like, really high up there. And when you factor in everything else, uh, Makar for the Avs, like, he's definitely up there. I'll, I'll have to pull up my Gallagher stuff later, because I've been on this path a few times. Parisi for the Wild. Yeah, like, he's quite up there in production, especially for wingers. Uh, Ottinger for the Stars. And in goals. Uh, if there are two different teams, it gets randomed off. So, like, if we get a Young Gun checklist, it'd be the last box. It'd get randomed off between the two teams at the end of the break. Um, if it's two of the same, so say, like, we get two of the same Young Gun checklist somehow, like an exclusives and a regular... We'll random it off. Um, winner gets the best one. Loser gets the other one. Reduke for Vegas. But yeah, uh, pretty much it's random if it's two or three or more teams. Um, so, Kind of like standard for all breaks. If you're new to breaks, pretty much you just it's the same thing with the team randoms, except it's just the, only the, uh, the teams involved. Uh, Angelo for the Penguins on the Young Guns. So like, for example, say that dual jersey card was... Chicago, Minnesota. I'd get random three times between Chicago and Minnesota. Whatever team lines on top in that random uh, gets it. So, uh, Jonas Johansson for the Sabres on the rookie portraits. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, same thing if there's like a 31, like if there's like a random card without a team that's assigned to it. Uh, Delandrea for the Stars on the rookie. But yeah. Gallagher's sneaky, sneaky good. Like, I don't think people realize how how good he's been. Corpusallo for the Blue Jackets. So, I hope he can stay healthy and keep causing havoc, because he is on a pretty good contract, too, so... Like, even his next contract's pretty solid value. The tail end you're a little bit worried about just because of his play style, but... Um, yeah. I really like his game. McLeod for the Oilers. Obviously, a little bit of bias there with him being a former Giant, but... Very, very good winger. Obviously, if I'm starting a franchise today and it's like, our goal is to win now and long term, he's probably not up there just because of his age. Andre for the stars in terms of who I'm picking, but like in terms of like top ten right now for winners, I I'd take him in my top ten. Uh, Berdine for the Jets on the blue.
Uh, Kratz off for the Rangers. On the ooh, wrong pile. Rookie portraits. All right. What do you think we're gonna get out of Black Diamond? I am feeling. I don't know what I'm feeling. Uh, Brome for the Red Wings on the Young Guns. I'm feeling like some sort of rookie auto. Obviously, that's pretty like. Like maybe maybe a Jason Robertson auto. That's that's what I'm feeling. We got a Young Gun canvas coming up. Uh, Jack Hughes Dazzlers for the Devils and Hagel for Chicago. On the Young Gun canvas, not the worst one that you could get. Uh, Kivlenix on the Young Guns for the Blue Jackets. So quieter box here. Oh, uh, it was Cousins. No, he was last box. Yeah, this is definitely a quieter box. Oh, that's why we got a uh, yellow. Oh, oh, that's actually solid. I saw the blue and it's like, maybe it's lot, but I'll take like Nick Robertson to 99 on the yellow rookie portraits. I don't know if they're yellow or gold, but it's yellow. Like really it's, it's yellow. So spicy, spicy card. So good break for the Leafs. Uh, young gun wise, I mean, we've had some solid ones. We hit Robert Sins, both of them. Uh, Cousins, Hughes, Broberg French. Byram in Black Diamond. I mean, hey, just ask for Makar out of ice, right? All right, here we go. Black Diamond box one. This is box 813 or 33 on the back, depending on what numbers you go by if you're superstitious. I'll look at both and normally go, I normally go by the uh, the NHL one, but sometimes the back one's really nice. I'll go with that. All right, yeah, it's been a pretty, uh, pretty big night for the Leafs and quiet night for the Habs. Chicago's obviously got stuff. Okay, we definitely, I think we have a diamond, so we'll save that to the end. Or maybe it's just, hang on, I just want to see how we're, okay, there's really, I don't know, we'll just go top to bottom here. Uh, Ovechkin for the caps to 349 on the base. Uh, ooh, oh, that snuck up on me. Uh, gemography to 25 for the Ottawa Senators of Thomas Shabbat. So you get a nice little diamond chunk in there with the autograph. Uh, nice one there. Who had him? Uh, Brendan. There you go. Uh, well, I'll sleeve, sleeve that one up after. Uh, Black Diamond All-Star Team logos of Thomas Harrell. So this will be the Sharks. Uh, we'll put that up there. Uh, patch to 50 of William Carlson for the Vegas Gold. Nice, nice little patch there. Uh, for the Oilers, Rookie Gems of Tyler Benson. And exquisite rookie or ex, er, exquisite performers to 199 of Kershev for Chicago. So a nice little gemography. So we did have a diamond in there. Felt like we had one coming. Shabbat's a really good defender too. So ah, uh, here this is an easy swap. You had your time in the spotlight from like pretty much pack one. Now we get the diamond in there. It's been a gem of a break so far. Sorry, that's a really bad one. All right, ice time. Things that NHL players want a lot of. Ice time. Empty. Uh, for those playing the numbers game, this is 56 and 38 on the box numbers. And as always with ice, we will get the ice premieres rookies out of the way first. Typically, the back two um, are always ice premieres rookies. So, Bennington for the Blues on the green, and 2999 Veronu for the Senators. On the Ice Premier's rookie. Let's see, uh, let's see a 249 here. 
probably gonna be like a 499, but I wanna see a 249. Seth Jones for the Blue Jackets on the green and 499 of Prohorkin for the Kings. Well, if that was uh, series two, you'd be happy because I'd mean Makar sometimes, but it is not series two, so. Uh, next up, Patrick Kane for Chicago on the orange and Jimmy Schultz for Vegas on the Ice Premier's jersey. Uh, this could be a patch. It could also just be an exquisite base. But it's, I think it's just a... Ooh, it's gold. So uh, it's definitely like a rookie, though. So who's it going to be? Oh, we have two greens. Uh, we have Eichel and Mantha, Sabres and Red Wings. And Furlow Leafs to 19. Toronto hidden big. Mikheyev on the exquisite rookie's gold. Nice low-numbered Mikheyev. I mean, just a cool card. Really, like, honestly, for these cards, it's got a little bit of dings in the top corners, but that's fairly normal. Uh, Toronto's just having a heck of a break here. Uh, let's let's throw in now. Uh, honestly, let's take Quinn. I'm sorry, you're you're gonna can take a back seat here. Never mind. You'll you'll slide over here. You're a top young gun pole. You can stay up. But yeah, that's a solid little Nikea 19. Obviously, you know, you'd rather have it be one of the bigger rookies, but yeah, you, you take a Mikhaev. Uh Darlene on the green for the Sabres and Nico Sturm for the Wild to 399. Oh, it, it definitely would be very least fan to be uh watching this, yeah. Hey, Minnesota, you may not hit in uh, Series 2, but you hit in Ice. Probably not what you're looking for, but hey. All right, Black Diamond. Uh, let's see. We got a Vet Auto. Let's see. I don't know. We're going to see some sort of, like, manufactured patch that's, like, low numbered. Let's go 25 or less, I think. Ooh, that's a that's a good rookie on the back. All right, uh, let's go two off the back, I guess. It's normally like that second, third card that's the strongest. So uh, for Vegas, Peyton Krebs on the Diamond Futures at 349. Well, that's, uh, never mind. Uh, for the Rangers, silver on black auto of Mike Richter to 25. Nice Mike Richter to 25. That is like, I mean, on card, I would call it. Uh, Jason Robertson, exquisite rookies for the Stars to 299. Nice one there. Uh, Shifley for the Jets on the base. Uh, rookie gems for the Leafs autos of Lil Jagrin. And, well, yeah, we hit a jumbo low number to 15 of Phil Esposito for the Bruins. So, really solid uh, solid little box there. Uh, like, I'd say, I know Liljegren's lost his popularity, but uh, mid-tier, like, rookie. The Richter's really nice. That's a really, really nice card. That actually goes on the stand. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Broberg, you can knock off Hughes just because you're a little bit rarer. But hey, we hit the manufactured patch to 25 or less, so I can predict the future a little bit. That was a really, really solid box of Black Diamond, though, like all things considered. In terms of just like low numbered cards and good stuff. So, all right, and Premier. Let's uh, finish this off on a high note. And not a Dan high note. I don't think he's even got stuff in this, so I hope not. Uh, for those playing at home, 87 is the front box number, 13 is the back. What are we gonna see out of Premier? All right, 
I'm just gonna take a quick peek just to order so we end on the uh, the high note here. Uh, I think that is gonna be the high note. Yeah, that'll be the high note. Oh, well, they were they had a pretty good break as well, and I think that is probably the best patch that you could get. So, uh, Dobson for the Islanders on the backdrop swatches to 99. Uh, Gignac rookie premier jersey to the Devils or for the Devils, not numbered. Uh, Marchand based at 299 for the Bruins. Frederick for the Bruins to 299 on the rookie. A rookie patch auto for the Leafs. Travis Dermott, numbered four of 249. Uh, get that synced up after. Uh, for the Nashville Predators, Rem Pitlick, rookie auto, the horizontal to 99. And for the Edmonton Oilers, premier mega patch, chest logo with the oil drop. That is a super sick patch. It's Miko Koskinen, but like that is literally the best Oilers patch that you can get. So, uh, really nice card. Not the best player, but for a game-worn patch, like, y you can't get a better Oilers patch. So, uh, the good thing with that is that it'll be collected just because of the patch. So, uh, no randoms to do. Uh, pretty standard break in that regard, but... Oh, I, I was hoping it was McDavid as well. But then I saw the name on the side and it's like, oh, it's like, no, it's one of those just like, it's a really nice card. Like, it's really cool. You just hope for, you know, a better player, but yeah. Uh, so that's it for today's break. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Um, overall, really solid. I'd say, uh, like nothing incredible but nothing like horrible so uh just like solid some cool stuff some rare stuff i mean a really cool patch like you can't you can never go wrong with an oil drop patch so um yeah anyways uh see you tomorrow for some basketball uh take care and enjoy the playoffs tonight see ya